So good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for coming to this presentation. Today we have Miss uh, Professor Steve Payton mm -hmm. from Fukuoka mm -hmm. University. I wish. <laughs> um, <laughs> lecturer at Fukuoka University and the president of Fukuoka JALT. So yeah. today we'll be talking about reliance on Quizlet for content and assessment. Everyone, please give Mr. Professor Steve Payton a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. And it's uh, strictly uh, a Mr. situation. All right. Thanks for coming along, everybody. And, uh, and uh, you're interested in this. Um, I'm going to be sharing my screen now, if I can. All right. So what I'm going to be talking about today is, um, well, a situation that a colleague and I found ourselves in this time last year, or about kind of more close to sort of 10 and a half months ago. Uh, where we had to suddenly make some very big decisions about how to run our university classes. So it was uh, my colleague, where am I? This one. My colleague Alex and I, Alex Cameron, who uh, we both teach at Fukuoka University, and we were not sort of co-teaching or team teaching, but we're just in communication with each other, and we had both used Quizlet before. Um, and sort of while we were deciding what we're going to do about this upcoming semester, we both had the idea, well, you know, Quizlet is... is uh, is it was something we've both used before, so let's uh, sort of coordinate and, and try to help each other out and sort of plan plan using Quizlet a lot. So we ended up putting a lot of weight onto this tool, and um, we didn't really. Well, I'm going to tell you the story of sort of how that went. Um, it, it we got it up and running, and then halfway through the semester, we sort of wondered whether we'd gone a little bit too far and put too much reliance upon this as a tool, but. Uh, if you've seen my little promo video, you'll know this story it does have a happy ending, and it turns out that we did uh, we did very well with this. So uh, I'm going to uh, try to push on through here and and uh, give a bit of an introduction to Quizlet if you don't know what it is, and I will be demonstrating it in a minute. But just very quickly, uh, what is Quizlet? Basically, Quizlet is a flashcards app, a digital flashcards app. There's more to it than that, and I'll show you. But um, uh, it is not just sort of any old app this is the very very widely used i think it's pretty much the the flagship um flashcards app that you can find there is a website version as well it's of course on ios and android uh, it's very widely used very widely studied i've been hearing from other teachers using this since early 2010s um it allows teachers to assign lists and create lists very very easily you literally just if i i make my quiz lists in a spreadsheet just copy down two columns paste it and bang it turns it into flashcards which i can then share uh, so as far as alex and i were concerned this is something that we both used it before in classes and uh also for our own study and i've actually used this in well for of course vocabulary and and even kanji to some extent but you can make flashcards of anything and and just as a little novelty i i i tend to hang around in jail circles a lot and uh and whenever I go to JALT conferences, I meet people from all around the country and they, I say, where do you live? And they tell me and I go, oh, where's that? So I made myself or I, I went and found actually on Quizlet a, a deck of cards that other people had made of the prefectures of Japan. And I just drilled the prefectures of Japan and had a really good time learning, learning that. All right. So it's not only vocab. You can make sort of quite you can make like three sided cards, I think. It, there's a lot of scope. But I mean, I'd, I, I'm into it for the basic functions. But uh, it is it is a, a great app, and uh, I use it a lot. I use it now every day, pretty much, pretty much every day. Anyway, April twenty twenty, we uh, had some very big decisions to make. Um, back then, if you recall, <laughs> if you want to recall, I kind of want to forget. But basically, we were told we were not going to be on campus immediately, and our my our university delayed the start for two weeks, and we just simply didn't know how long we'd be off campus. Um, we didn't know what kind of contact we would have with our students. We didn't know if they had computers. We just didn't know anything, right? So we had an idea like, okay, we've got to come up with something now. So perhaps we could do a kind of vocabulary study in lieu of, uh, or like instead of, uh, you know, content. So perhaps it could be a situation where, look, let's just get them started on learning the vocab that we might use later on when we get back to the classroom. Or, uh, you know, having settled on that as a viable situation, we thought, well, perhaps we could, you know, maybe we're going to, 
if we're going to stick around here for weeks and weeks and weeks, this could be, become a bit of a vocabulary course uh, if we're never going to get back into the classroom. So we came up with a way of assigning uh, or using Quizlet to give sort of weekly accessible homework. I'll get into the assessment part later. But uh, not knowing what we were doing, we weighted quite heavily. And in fact, for my classes, I weighted at up to 60% of their entire assessment. Uh, it would be weekly and ongoing, and they'd have to meet deadlines, but that's an enormous uh, proportion of a class, as I'm sure you are aware, 60% for, uh, for homework. Um, we both used it in different ways, as I said, Alex, my colleague and I, um, I tended to give them lists of about 20 to 30 words um, and simply just get them to study them. You can check it. I'll show you how in a minute. And uh, Alex, on the other hand, used, uh, I, sorry, I used sort of 20 to 30 words drawn from the textbook that we would be using each unit. Um, Alex tended to use a more general sort of, uh, he, it's called the general services list or something, some high fr frequency uh, vocab list. So he would give longer lists of up to a hundred words, um, require them to do less than I did on the app, but then he'd recycle those words in, in other tasks as well. So we both kind of uh, did a couple of different things in a couple of different ways. Now I'm gonna just show you if I can stop sharing this one and then I'm gonna try to share my phone. So you can just see what this does. This should be coming to my phone right now. All right, I'm guessing that you can see this. Now, I've just chosen a, a deck here of very, very simple vocabulary. Now, this is like really elementary vocab that I, in a deck that I've prepared, this is way beneath the sort of level that I was using in classrooms, but you can see uh, the kind of words we're looking at here, extremely high frequency English uh, uh, vocab. So look, what I'm gonna show you here is these five activities, learn, flashcards, write, match, and test. So these are the basic functions of, uh, of Quizlet. I'll start with the flashcards app because this is the one that I use the most for myself and that I sort of get others, get the students to look at. So you can see here, this is simply a two-sided, you'll probably be hearing that, right? It talks, <laughs> you can turn that off. But uh, the basically, actually what I might do is just go to the options, reset this. So there are 48 words in this deck. So a student would come along and have a look at this, call if they know the word, which would be uh, Yobu. If they know it, they can get rid of this card by swiping to the right and that sort of gets rid of the card it's gone if they see this word and it's uh, tete -tete, they, but they don't know this one you can send it off to the to the left and it will it's like putting it at the back of the deck it'll come up again at the end after you cycle through them all so this is a very very handy remember get Okay, I didn't know that one, so I'll go to the left. And basically, after I go th cycling through them all, it'll just give me the ones that I haven't learned yet. All right, that's the flashcards app. It's it's just like holding flashcards in your hand. The learn app. Oops, I might have to reset this. So let's see. Okay, so this is asking me to type in Japanese, which I'm not going to even try to do. Uh, I don't think I've got. I do have a Japanese keyboard there, but I can check that. No, I didn't get it right. So. Uh, I'll just continue. Uh, this is asking me for the English. So this must be, oh, copy the correct. Why am I, oh, I'm on the wrong keyboard. But look, I'll skip all that. The Learn app, um, sorry, I wish I'd reset that at the beginning. Uh, this will give you multiple choice sometimes and it will give you type the English and it will give you type the Japanese. Um, and it requires, at the top you can see, it requires that you get each answer correct once and then twice. It'll cycle through. Once you've sort of got it twice, it'll say that you've learned it. Uh, that's a, a little bit more um, demanding. It requires typing and things. Anyway, that's the Learn app. The Write app is strictly writing. Sorry, I'm going to reset this as well. Oh, let's just go this way. Next round, here we go. Yeah, so this is gonna ask me to type Japanese again, which I'm not gonna do, but this is writing it's much more strict. Uh, it does have the situation where, well, actually I can probably do this actually, Nado, right? Is it gonna give me that as correct? Yes, it is, okay, that's good. That's nice of it. Okay, I can probably do that one too. Uru, is it gonna give me the kanji? Yes, it is. Okay, well, that's kind of, but you can see it progressing along the top bar there, right? That's right, you can go both ways, Japanese and English. The match is a game. And it's timed. It's timing me at the top there. Um, if I match here with Kiku, I can match right with uh, Kaku. There's that. Feel my. Oh, hang on. Let's do decide is Kimeru. Go would be Iku. Oops. Oh. Hiku. Iku. It rhymed. 
pull Hiku feel this way, right? So I got uh, 11.6. Now I got 21 seconds, but my best time there is 11. But uh, some students who have looked at this deck have got it much, much faster than me. How about that? Wow, 3.7 seconds, but it's quite fun. That's a little game called Match. And the last one is a test where you can assign yourself a little test. And uh, let's try this. This is asking me to type in English. That must be uh, say it, say or speak. I guess that's going to be right. Tomorrow that's going to be stop. Let's see how I go with this. Here's a, uh, a, a that's a call. This would be, uh, uh, what would that be? Move. It's Ugoku, and this is, this is a true or false question, right? Is this read? Uh, yes, it is true. So bang, I got 100% in my test. There we are. Now, uh, if I was to do that again, um, you can see here, this will come up later. Question count, how many questions in my test? I could give myself a 20 question test or I can go long. Oh, I didn't know I could go so high. But I could also give myself a, a one question test. I don't know why they have that as an option, but they do, but there you go. So those are the five activities that uh, Quizlet facilitates. Now I'm going to stop sharing that and go back to my deck. Just a minute. Okay, I'm going to show you now. Uh, click, click, here we go. You'll be seeing that now. Okay, um, on the website, well, actually backtrack a, a little bit. Students download the app, they join, they register for the app, they join my class to which I give them the link. They'll join that, I'll accept it in the class, and then they'll come up in the screen like this. So on any deck, I can see their progress. And you'll notice that uh, some of the activities along here, this second row, I've, I've removed their names, obviously, but this student here has begun the learn activity, but it hasn't finished, so it's gone white. The other ones are gray. If they begin it, it turns white. And if they complete it, they get a green check mark. So this is a way of sort of assessing that they have done it. Um, it's quite easy to check and just sort of scan through and see that everybody's done it. And what I would do is assign the homework that they need to complete four of the five activities. I let them off the hook for one of them because, for instance, if I was doing it, I wouldn't want to do that right activity because it's just too strict and too sort of heavy. And I, if they're not into that, I don't want to force them to do that. I'd rather them just do simply flashcards, actually, but uh, that's just my own preference. All right, so that's what we got them doing. And they were doing weekly homework like this. Uh, speaking from my own case, especially, uh, they were doing this weekly, uh, a deck of up to 25 words, sometimes 30. Um, and that was a lot of their homework, up to 60%, not in every class, but certainly, you know, between 40 and 60%, just do this flashcards homework. I kind of had to guess at how long it was taking them. But back in, you know, in that situation, we really didn't have a great deal of choice. So we had something to give them because we knew they would have phones and uh, it, would, it would do for now, right? But halfway through the semester, while I've been at this for, you know, seven, eight, nine weeks, we uh, both began to wonder, look, is this really sort of beneficial? Is this any good? Look, they can get themselves a green check mark on that thing, but does that really mean that they've done it? Does that really mean that they've studied it hard? Um, and as we went along, we sort of realized, geez, it's so easy for them to just game this system, right? The flashcards app, if they swipe right, and they just go swipe, 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 bang, you finished the flashcards app and they've never looked at anything. They don't even need to flip a card back and forth. Um, the test app, which I just showed you, they could do a one question test, bang, they get a green check mark. Um, the learn thing, a little harder to, to, to rig. The write thing, a little harder to rig. The match game, they can, as you see, <laughs> they can get through that in three seconds. Um, so we began to think, oh, gee, you know, maybe this is a bit of a gimme. Um, which we didn't really want. And also, even if they were doing it correctly and, and, and diligently, you might say, were they doing it begrudgingly? Did they hate this? Did they feel they were benefiting from this? Or did they feel it was just busy work, sort of pointless? And, uh, you know, this was all a mystery to us because a lot of these students we had sort of zero contact with, really. Uh, I was doing this in the class, in a number of classes that were all completely asynchronous. So all I sort of did was uh, check their... I was making videos for them every week. I didn't know if they were watching them either, but uh, um, I would just be checking the website and looking for green check marks and then posting their results on the Moodle and, you know, contacts, asynchronous contact, but I'd had no way of gauging 
what they were thinking of this. And at some point we had to begin thinking about, well, what are we going to do in the second semester? Are we going to do the same thing or not? So we really needed to uh, evaluate our program, our programs. We were doing independently, but both had the same sort of uh, situation. So we got talking and said, well, we should you know, find out. Let's make a survey and, uh, and try to find out what's going on here. So basically we had sort of three research questions that we wanted to answer um that we were both wondering about and then we wanted to formulate so here's our research questions that we came up with the first one is monitoring the completion of tasks on quizlet which is pretty much all we were doing we were assigning these lists and then monitoring whether they were doing it is monitoring the completion of tasks on quizlet a good valid and appropriate tool of assessment and you know we both had to admit there's a, a plenty of scope there for the answer to be no and that we may have sort of gone in a little bit uh, naively, but you know, doing our best. But uh, that could be a, a resounding no. It's not a good way to do it. So we had wanted to find out. The second question we had: some activities can be rushed through without diligent effort. So to what extent are the students doing that? Um, this was particularly a, a, a sort of what's the word? It's something I got sort of hung up on. Um, I don't feel I, I don't feel happy giving students sort of meaningless work that they can just zip through and and frankly cheat on. You know, I'd like to think my job is worth a little more than that uh, and my sort of life's effort. So I was concerned about this. Um, the third research question we came up with was uh, was this: Are students utilizing Quizlet properly for actual learning? Because as you know, as pessimistic as I can tend to be, there may be scope there for the answer to be yes, which would have been a lovely surprise. And I, we both agreed that would be worth finding out. So there's our research questions. So we, um, we had some other minor questions as well. And I'll show you the, the survey that we came up with. In fact, here is the survey that we came up with. Uh, we uh, designed it just to be used on Google Forms. Very, very easy. I'm a big fan of Google Forms. Uh, we put it completely in Japanese so that they would have no trouble reading it. It was translated by my wife, who uh, obviously is a native speaker of Japanese. It was anonymous. They did not need to give their names. And we implored them in our uh, you know, Moodle posts and videos about this thing. It was like, please be honest. We want your honest answers. We have no way of tracking you. This is going to be completely anonymous. And uh, we, oops. Sorry, I didn't mean to go back there, but sorry, I won't bother. But uh, we had informed consent situation. At the top of the survey was a big uh, sort of preamble in Japanese that your answers, you don't need to participate in this, but if you do, your answers will be used to inform our research. And, uh, you know, going ahead with our survey will be taken as consent. So here's our survey questions that we asked them in Japanese. And most of the questions were on a four-point Likert scale, Likert scale, however you're meant to pronounce that word, but uh, a, a strongly agree, agree, disagree, and strongly disagree, or to that effect. Here we go. So overall, how much did you enjoy using Quizlet? And uh, as I go through these questions, I hope you can sort of anticipate the kind of nervousness I had of coming up with these because there was just, as I say, just such a, a, a high, not high, but there was a probability there was an X probability that the, the answers could come back to us that we really just botched this. Uh, how much did you enjoy using Quizlet? Uh, how much time did you spend each week on Quizlet? Because again, we didn't really know what we were asking them to do. You know, if we suddenly sort of discovered now that we were giving them 90 minutes of homework every week on this, that would have been a surprise. On the other hand, we may have found that they're flipping through it in, in five or 10 minutes, which would not have really been enough. What percentage of the words were you already familiar with? So were we giving them, again, meaningless busy work uh, that they were not really benefiting from? That was a concern for me. Or were we overwhelming them with a whole bunch of new, con new content? And as you saw in the little demo there, I mean, this is atomatized. This is just word to word. Um, there's no real context. I hoped that the words I was giving them would be contextualized later when we got to the textbook and sort of use, use those words. But uh, Alex was using just sort of vocabulary for high frequency word lists. So we, again, we didn't know whether that was useful or not. If they were reviewing words, what uh, was doing that beneficial again, or was it just meaningless busy work? Next question. Did you feel your vocabulary knowledge grew as a result of these activities? Because again, looking for a worthwhile 
uh, take on this? Was it? You know, did you feel? Did they? Did you feel? Did you get some sort of you know personal satisfaction that uh, your vocab knowledge increased? We wanted to know about the app itself and uh, about assigning the different tasks. So, which activity was best for you for learning words uh, of those five? I will get to that in a minute, obviously, with the results. But did you ever rush through? Here's my big you know, sticking point questions. Did you ever rush through some words and activities? For example, just flicking right on that flashcards app or doing a one question test or that kind of thing. Did you ever rush through? And, and Alex sort of saved me from myself here by proposing the question that we, oops, oh, sorry, I've just gone through and uh, sorry, I just went to the wrong slide. Can I skip through? Yes, okay. Uh, here we go. If you rush through, why? Because he, he very correctly pointed out, okay, they may be rushing through, but maybe it's simply because they know the words. So that was our uh, survey. Now, the results. And uh, I want to point out here that this is a lot of classes and a lot of students. In fact, we had 386 responses, which is good. That's a good amount of uh, data from which we can draw some pretty reliable um, findings or, or results, right? So we were kind of happy to get this many good results from across, in fact, I mean, a lot of departments and even multiple universities, because I was doing this in a part-time university as well. So here's the results. All right, so overall, how much did you enjoy using Quizlet? And again, this is heavy homework. This is a lot, worth a lot to them and possibly demanding on their time. We didn't know, but here's what we got. So positive, enjoyed a lot or enjoyed accounts for looking like 71% of students. So that was an enormously satisfying answer to get, right? That uh, the students were enjoying it you know, a, a lot. I mean, you're never going to satisfy everybody, but that's a very good amount to get. And enjoyed a lot, 25% a lot. We were really surprised by this. This is very, very pleasing. Um, the DNR down there means did not respond. So, I mean, only... 6% said they disliked, actively disliked. And geez, I mean, that's I'm happy with that. That's cool. <laughs> All right. So that was that question. Next question. Approximately how much time did you spend each week on Quizlet? And we asked this in 10-minute increments or less than 10 minutes and, and more than 60. Here's this result. So this tells us that it's very, very well varied. Um, some students getting away with not so much and other students taking a lot longer. Um, in fact, breaking down this data, 20% uh, of the students spent more than 60 minutes a week on this homework, which was surprising, but a comparable amount spent to less than 20. So we didn't really, we still don't really know what to make of this. Um, I, we put it down to how much students valued their English coursework load um, and how interested they were in doing it. So um, just pretty much glad to see that it was not overwhelmingly demanding and not overwhelmingly undemanding, really. So we kind of looked at that and went, well, that's, uh, that's good. I mean, that shows a, a diversity of, of time and perhaps a diversity of approaches and, and like I say, value that they place on it. All right, next question. Ask what percentage of the words were you already familiar with? Now, keeping in mind that uh, we were both treating this very differently in, in terms of content, um, but the overall uh, results across for both of us is this, that roughly 50% of the students reported prior familiarity with 50% or more of the words, right? So that's more than half of the students saying that they knew or had seen uh, more than half of the words. So this was a little touchy for us, it, just to look at this result on its own. It's like, oh, that's a lot of words that they're kind of recycling. Now, does that mean that they're not learning as much as they possibly could have been if we had been able to you know, select better words for them? Um, now, the problem with this is we don't really have a clear definition of what familiar means. And this could, in, it could encompass you know, uh, sight words and, and sort of instantaneous recall, or it could mean, uh, yeah, I've seen that word, but I can't quite remember exactly what it is. 
But uh, again, I mean, kind of diverse here, but skewing towards, yeah, they've seen a lot of words before. So as I said, I mean, this kind of concerned me a little bit. It's like, oh, that's, I would have liked to have seen more kind of new and more sort of novel. And, uh, but then again, but then again, uh, was reviewing the words beneficial to you? So it all sort of hint, it came to, to hinge on this. Uh, they're recycling a lot of words or they're seeing a lot of words for the second or third or hundredth time. But overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly reporting, 86.3% that adds up to of students reporting that reviewing words was beneficial or very beneficial. So this was a huge relief. That And in fact, it sort of said, oh, in that case, if you find that so beneficial, then indeed, let's uh, give them more words that they have had exposure to before. Because, I mean, these are students from a diverse range of uh, faculties, uh, anything from engineering to English uh, and everything in between. Um, so these are students that are not using English frequently. So perhaps it's just nice to go back and, you know, refresh on these words that you've seen through junior high school and high school, uh, just as I might sort of review, enjoyed reviewing kanji that I have studied at some point but forgotten, and then, uh, you know, enjoy going through and playing little games with it on flashcards or on my phone. So very happy with that. So that uh, gave us scope to, uh, to continue with the same kind of word lists that we'd been using. I was happy using, you know, my approach that sort of textbook words. Alex was happy using the general service list sort of words. So that was uh, very good to, to see. All right, now student perception of this whole project. Did you feel your vocabulary knowledge grew as a result of these quiz activities? And again, we were pleased with this sort of result. This is giving us 86.8% .8 reporting yes or very much that they felt whether or not it did or not is a different question, but they felt, and that's important enough to us to ask, did they feel that their vocab knowledge grew? And they said, yes. So that was very, very happy. And keep in mind, they have just reported that they knew more than half the words or had seen or had some familiarity with more than half the words, a lot of them. So that's great. I guess they became more familiar with it and felt more, uh, well, felt more familiar and felt more of a, a knowledge. All right, um, which activity? So this is looking again, sort of more at the at the app itself. Um, which activity was best for you for learning the words? Now, as I've alluded to a few times here, I'm into flashcards. I love flashcards. In fact, in fact, just a quite just a short story. I came to Japan in 2008 um, and was using flashcards to learn kanji and vocab, and I was killing it. My first couple of years here, big mistake I made in about 2010 end of 2010 was to buy an iPod touch and go looking for flashcards apps. And there was simply never a flashcard app that was as good as flashcards, but I kept on looking. So I basically stopped studying for the next couple of years because I was busy looking for a good app. So I wouldn't have to carry my cards around, but if I just not bothered and just carried my cards around, I would become, I would have become a kanji master. I would be, I would be far ahead of where I am right now. So I'm into flashcards, but guess what? The students, not so much. They're into the learn activity. So the learn activity was a bit more demanding. That was the one where they're being asked either true or false questions. Is this, does this word mean this? They were being asked to type in the Japanese. They were being asked to type in the English and to learn everything twice or to give a correct answer twice. Um, so also to my astonishment, but not so much, the, the right activity, the writing, that's the strictest. That's really like accuracy practice right that's uh it's really surprising that they favor those but then again it's not because if you've ever done any sort of reading into research into well i'm into mnemonics and memory strategies and it turns out the japanese learners are not into mnemonics and memory strategies they're into repetition this is what they've been taught through junior high school and high school and this is what they tend to feel you know at home with and familiar with so uh I have always been teaching uh, flashcards with, um, with you know, an, a, a mnemonic approach, but uh, <laughs> and having trouble with that. I've written papers about this, but uh, yeah, it turns out just give them an activity that involves repetition and repetition and repetition and accuracy, and they're kind of happy with that. So anyway, I mean, for me, I think of Quizlet as a flashcards app, but perhaps the students don't think of it that way. They're thinking it more of a writing quiz app but anyway that's the way they see it so fine by me all right now my big uh my big uh sort of uh, 
bugbear question. Did you ever rush through some words and activities? And we gave them never or whenever I wanted to, right? On, on, a, on a, actually a five point scale here. And uh, here's what we get. So 35% of students reporting that they never just skip through. And a further 28, nearly 30, another 30% almost reporting that they rarely skip through. So this was very pleasing and surprising to me. And again, we implored them repeatedly to be honest because we couldn't track them. This had nothing to do with their, you know, this, this survey had nothing to do with their grades or anything like that. But uh, if this is to be believed, and I don't have any reason to disbelieve it, then it just... It's an enormous, it's a terribly small number of students who are gaming the system, you know, 6.5%, which is about how many students answered that they didn't enjoy Quizlet anyway. And uh, I'm quite happy to sort of brush that off as a, as a, a you know, a, <laughs> a triviality. So just 6% of students reporting, yeah, if I felt like it, I just skipped through it and got the point. Okay, I can live with that, right? That's uh, that. I don't feel bad about that. Really, quite pleased, in fact. Now, as for the students who did rush through, so we're talking a very small number here. Um, if you did rush through, then why is that? Um, I already knew the words, so it sort of seemed a little, you know pointless to go through typing the same thing again and again, perhaps, or just wanted to finish and get the points. Of the very small number who did rush through the majority because they sort of knew the words. So, you know, I would do the same thing probably. It's like, I know that one. I can't be all the typing it. So uh, the, the, the problem or the, uh, the concern that I had that students were, you know, gaming this and cheating this and not getting anything out of it at all were, was very much put, well, my mind was put at ease for that. So that's our results. Now, the takeaways we got from this is that indeed our research question, you know, this is, this is, does turn out to have been a valid and appropriate route to have taken in the situation, assigning these word lists and assigning this as homework, uh, quite heavily weighted. It turns out we thought from these results that yes, it was not misguided. It was very well guided. <laughs> you know, we, I think we got lucky. Uh, the activities appear to be enjoyable to the students. That's good news. I'm happy for them to enjoy this homework. We want that to be the case, uh, particularly in a in an unenjoyable, well, I thought unenjoyable remote situation where they're not uh, perhaps enjoying, you know, the, the, some of the classroom uh, affordances. All right. So if they can enjoy having a bit of fun with this on their phone, then that's great. Um, the students were far more diligent than might have been expected by a pessimist like me. Uh, so that was very good news. They were taking it more seriously than I feared that they would. Um, and the most important takeaway for us at the end of the first semester here was that we both felt confident in using it similarly in the second semester. So we built this into our second semester revised syllabuses or syllabi and, uh, and beyond. I think uh, even if we were heading back into a purely face-to-face uh, -face, uh, situation, I would probably be happy to uh, continue to uh, sign this kind of homework uh, and give it some weighting within, uh, within a regular face-to-face -face or classroom course. So reliance upon Quizlet for content assessment turns out to have been a, not a bad idea at all, and I would uh, commend it to anybody. So with that, I think... Uh, Thanks to Alex for helping with the data and the data collection and everything. And uh, I think that's uh, about that. So I'm happy to uh, discuss Quizlet or take any questions or, or anything from, uh, from anybody who has such a question. Thank you. Thank you very much, Steve. Um, I think right. we have several questions here on chat. And I- Oh yeah, in the chat, I see. We have one from Michiko and- Michiko, yeah, what age? These are all university students. These are all university. These are mainly first and second year university students. Uh, are these from high school level students? Wonder if they seem motivated. Yes. Um, I mean, I was surprised by this. Yeah, m the majority were first year university students. Now, second year university students do tend to be much less motivated than first years. Um, these were mainly first years. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's surprising, right? It's surprising. To, to see that level of engagement and enthusiasm for this uh, for this uh, app and this project this program thank you um any mm -hmm. other questions on the floor yeah 
It's actually very interesting because um, I've been looking at apps to use for my classes mm. as well. And I was looking at Padlet and I actually did look at Quizlet, but I'm using mm. content heavy classes and yep. I wasn't able to use any of these apps, which would have been great because, you know, I, I used to take the commuter train to Tokyo and all everyone's just mm. in their phones anyway. So, you yeah. know, I think it's yeah. a great way to, to just um, use their time in a productive way. Actually. Right. And me too. Yeah. I mean, I'm using this for Japanese, uh, as I said. Yeah. I, it's uh, it, the, one of the problems that didn't come up in the, in the sort of research or in the project that in previous years before we all, you know, just got students on their phones all day with classes, there was a kind of vibe that students did not like to be given homework on their phone because their phone was sort of their little space. Right. Um, and they didn't want to be, invaded they want they want that sort of teacher in their phone in their face all the time so uh, that that was on my mind at the back of my mind that you know that that might not be appreciated but then i think that the students were sort of in a situation where they couldn't really not have their teachers in their phone all the time right that's just where we lived for the year and where we'll continue to live for another semester probably so again that's that again gives me uh gave me some relief that they were happy enough to answer so positively and it was on their phone it was in their hand it was on their device but they were cool with it um yeah. did you ask them how they were accessing the quizzes or can they access the quizzes or quizlet through their um laptops or only through their phones no they you can do it on the laptop um or on the desktop it, it's not i don't think it's as good an experience you um but they can. I didn't ask, actually. That would have been an interesting question to ask. But I assumed they were doing it on their phone. Um, I always, sort of, in my demonstrations or in my explanations, I always just sort of said, this is on your phone. Um, because Actually, that does connect here. Because at the beginning, we didn't know whether they would have computers or know how to use them or have Wi-Fi. This was, uh, I remember, I'll never forget that sort of utter confusion that we all had in sort of March, late March, early April of like, well, okay, how do we do this? Because these students are notoriously not computer literate. Do they even have computers? Do they have Wi-Fi? Do they have data? So, so this is why we sort of went directly to Quizzle because it's not data heavy at all. And uh, it's just another app and a free app. Jose you, um, has a question. Oh, Jose, yeah, please. Uh, yeah, I wanted to ask, man. Um, Sorry if I wasn't paying attention earlier, but I think you mentioned mm. that you're not using the paid teacher version, or you are using. I it. am. No, I, I, did, I didn't mention that. I am using it, but uh, oh. yeah. So I, I, it's like thirty five hundred a year or something like that. Um, to me, that's not a problem. Like that's okay. worth it because, uh, and what that allows actually is yeah. that uh, otherwise, I think on any deck that I give them, there will be no ads. But I think on, if you're using a free version, you'll see ads on uh, sort of interspersed within the decks. Or I don't know how it works because I've had a teacher account for some years. Just it just to me, it just makes it easier. And okay, so, so you said something like mm -hmm. 3,500 yen a year. Yeah. And it might be that they don't see ads on your decks or yep. that. Okay. On my decks, that's right. Yeah. And what else yep. can you do? What um, other functions? Like um, I think you can put photographs or you can choose your own photographs to put up there to make it a, a picture dictionary? something like that yeah i think you can um i actually don't know i mean to me the big one is ads i don't want them to be you know i don't want to give them homework where they're going to be looking at ads to me it's right. a sort of unethical right. situation in a way that's, so, uh, that's one thing i wanted to check with you is that yeah. i don't know if it just removes ads for me which isn't that big a deal if, if no it does really, for the I students as well it. but it does for the students as well mm -hmm. so that's what i wanted to check with but yeah yeah so i so i believe yeah so I, as i understand i yeah. have i have uh hi um this is michiko yep. i have hi. something like 450 sets on my quizlet right. account and yep. i'm a teacher okay. account the best thing yep. for me is that i usually have um, vocabulary against sentence mm. and i leave um vocabulary um blank so that the kids can match vocabulary and right sentence. but the quizlet reading is really fast for them so what i do is i record okay. my own voice oh, yeah. and right. you can do that with uh, teachers account so. 
Oh, mm-hmm. that's yeah. right. I forgot about With 450 that. decks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. What's gonna? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. The voice recording, recording your own voice is one of the best things about the teacher account. I found with that, and yeah, no ads. I mean, and like you, it's yeah. it's cheap enough that I'm willing to pay for it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm using this with like 10 classes a semester. Yeah. I didn't know. It's so yeah, I've cheap. never done the, the recording thing. Sorry. How's that go? No, no. I, I, it was just a comment. I didn't know it was that cheap. I thought it was, I must've misread it. I thought it was 3,500 in a month. And I thought, eh. nah. but at 3,500 getting, yeah, year, you know, like, yeah. Eighty eighty eight percent discount. Hey, <laughs> great. Quizlet should pay yeah. for this presentation. Cause I'm like actually thinking of Quizlet should pay you for this presentation. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it was a secret I, shill <laughs> there's no i'm not a shareholder in any no 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 <laughs> absolutely not no yeah. no yeah. but i mean quiz i have a funny funny thing with quizlet i mean to me teachers were using quizlet for ages and it was one of those apps that i got on my ipod touch and it was useless because it never that flashcards thing where you're swiping right and swiping left that's only been there for about two years before that they didn't have that which just blew my mind like why like you could not manipulate the order of the cards coming to you it was like i know it or i don't know it makes no difference next card like which to me is insane because the whole point of cards is that you change the order and that you kind of you know you start off with a deck of sort of 25 30 cards you'll zero if you know it, you put it down on the desk if you don't know you keep it in your hand and so you can zero in on the ones that you don't know right that's the whole point of cards to me it's like it's that um space learning thing in a, on a micro scale because you're just getting rid of the ones you know you're focusing in on the ones you don't know so the ones that you don't know you find them and you create the mnemonic you know you go to that trouble to sort of make up a silly story or something like that that's that's how i've always learned that's how i used to learn the kanji so well um and then i didn't because quizlet never had that um i started making in the classroom before all of this you know blew up last year i was um giving vocab tests at the beginning of every every lesson for, for my TOEIC class, for example. So I was still getting to learn the vocab, but I would just simply publish the list on a website and say, here, either make word cards, or if you want to, here's this app called Quizlet. I don't really like it so much, but some students do. And I did like a, a just a very basic survey at the end of one semester, like who's using Quizlet, who's not? And if you are using Quizlet, do you like it? So half the students are using Quizlet and most of them like it probably because they don't have to make any cards and they can just sort of flick through things on their phone. But to me, I would never use it because I didn't have that functionality of being able to differentiate between known and unknown. They brought that in and it's like, I just keep on giving reviews on the app stores. Like, this is great. Please never take away this functionality. (laughs) So I'm uh, certainly not a a partner or a shareholder, but geez, the day that they take that away, it's like, okay, I'm I'm out. (laughs) What a functionality idea from Tinder. Yeah. From, from Tinder here. Right? <laughs> no, it's from real cards. I used to go to conferences and, you know, people would be talking about how great Quizlet is. Like, yeah, but you can't do the basic thing of what word cards do. And they're like, oh, yeah, but maybe that's not so important. It's like, of course it's important. No, it's the most important thing of all minute. to me. Well, we have one minute, mm. one minute. And okay, Jose. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, oh yeah, yeah. So now that you've had this experience, and now that uh, it has the features that you want, um, coming into 2022, when most yeah. of us are probably going back to some semblance of normality, how do you mm. see yourself using this? And when you go back to where you don't really have to depend on it so much, you're going to use it as homework. You're going to bring it back into your assessments. What are you going to do when we get things back to normal? I think I will. I think it'll, it, it may not be, you know, something I'll lock myself into for the next 10 years, but first, for, certainly for, for the first semester that we're back, I think I'm going to continue this because it's nice to be able to have a strict deadline on when they've got to do the homework by. And this is what I've done. It's like homework is due, you know, half an hour before our zoom class starts. So that, that gives me a chance to sort of come into the, you know, set my computer up, go to quizlet.com, find that class, bang, screenshot. Okay, that's their homework taken care of. And then they know that vocab that we're going to be using in, in the textbook that day, right? There it is. Um, so I think I like that thing of like, yes, you can do the homework and I can check it online. Uh, I've got enough sort of validation here that they enjoy it. Um, it might not be worth 60% or, you know, anything like it, but I would still, I would still like to do, 
proper vocab tests, but it might be a situation where vocab tests are like a bonus point situation or something like that. I just want to sort of expose themselves to these words every week before the class. So, I mean, I don't really know yet, but I, I'm certainly not going to just, right, let's go straight back to, to only doing vocab tests in the classroom. I think this is great. It's a, a, a good affordance of good technology and they enjoy it. They enjoy it. They enjoy it. They seem to think it's worthwhile. They seem to feel like their vocab knowledge grew. So uh, yeah, I don't see any reason to, uh, to, to stop doing it. Did, did you just flash that textbook up because you were shill for that textbook or? Yep, I'm a shill to my own textbook. That's right. <laughs> I knew yes. it. You are a shill. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, commercial. Now this this is my textbook, but it's not commercially available. Oh, my God, it's only, yeah. doing it. I, I do a <laughs> I do a print run of how many students I have. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm just. Um, okay, thank you very much, Steve. Yep. For that All right, thanks for the questions, everybody. Interesting, yeah, very interesting mm. talk. I I think all of us learned a lot from it, and great. Okay, so everyone, um, if you want to talk more, you can move to the social room. And uh, I'm not sure if Steve wants to go there and you can talk to Steve more. Yeah, I will. I will. I'm into that. Yeah. Yeah. How about a round of applause? Uh, yes, and of thank course. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Thank you very thank you, everybody. much. everybody. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you very Good. much. Thank you for right. also there, Steve. us today, getting this, getting this yeah. room going together. Yeah, thank you very much, host.